In this video, we will talk about some myths about Tesla cars that many people still believe and some opportunities for the stock. This is your host Otis and you're watching Sustainable Truth. Charging Many people believe that Tesla cars can only be charged using a Tesla charging station. This is not true, there are many ways to charge your Tesla car. You can charge your car at home or in public with the use of regular outlet or a supercharger station. Let's go through the levels. Level 1. Countries with 110 outlet. Technically, you can connect your Tesla to a standard 110 volt plug, which you get with the free adapter that comes with the car. But you can only charge slowly at about 3 miles of range per hour park. It's about as practical as refilling a gas car's tank with an eyedropper. It will take up to 4 days to fully recharge an empty Tesla car battery using a regular wall outlet. Level 2 A 240 volt outlet over 30 amps circuit breaker charges a Tesla roughly at a rate of 33 miles or 53 km per hour. This requires an electrician to install and it's pretty much the same setup as your oven or dryer would be. So it takes 6 hours to charge the 200 miles or 320 kilometers. That costs 6 hours multiplied by 8 kilowatts multiplied by price per kilowatt hour in your area will equal the cost of charge. Level 3 Supercharging There are 3 versions. Version 1 are up to 100 kilowatt, so they will charge your model 3 let's say with 75 kilowatt hour pack from 20 to 90 percent in around 35 minutes. Version 2 Superchargers 150 kilowatts will do the same in under 25 minutes. And then we have version 3 superchargers which is 250 kilowatts and it's the newest edition. It will cut down the time to around 15 minutes. After driving over 300 kilometers or 200 miles at highway speed, you will not mind to stop to use a restroom and grab a drink and a bite to eat. Next time this happens, have a look, does it take you less than 15 minutes? Now of course there are variables to this. Depending on battery temperature, how busy the supercharger, etc. So just add another 10 minutes on top of all that, just in case. But it's really not that bad when you think of it. But what happens if you arrive at the stall but it's full and cars are just sitting there plugged in and the owners are having food, not in a rush to leave, etc. Well, Tesla has addressed this issue with idle fees. Simply put, they will charge a high rate for every minute your car is sitting there and not charging. With that being said, it's not like you're going to forget about it and have a massive bill at the end. Tesla app will notify you when your car is ready so you can come out from the store and move it if you want to stay longer. That being said, if you're an average commuter doing under 100 miles every day, 220 volt home charger would be sufficient and you only would use supercharging on big road trips. So it's not like you will spend your day sitting at the charging station. You will leave the car to charge overnight which is even cheaper depending on your location, and have it full and ready to go every morning. Visiting service stations will be way less frequent than with the internal combustion engine car. Also, as you're traveling on your road trip, you can check in the maps your next chargers, and it will show you how many stalls they're actually free and available before you arrive, so if it's a crazy busy station, you can reroute if need be. And just to add to that fact, as Tesla is producing more cars, they're also aggressively expanding on their charging network, unlike other EV companies. In the past 12 months alone, Tesla has added 18,708 charging stations, and the rate of which they are installing them is also increasing every quarter. Pollution Tesla cars are less polluting than internal combustion engine cars in every category. Even taking into consideration manufacturing and end of life, Tesla runs on a battery. The battery is charged by an electric grid that is powered by coal, natural gas and other fossil fuels depending on your location. Even though the Tesla's emissions are lower, the emissions from the electricity that charges it are not. So what's the difference? The difference is that Tesla emits zero pollutants while running, which will offset the extra CO2 required in production process, while internal combustion engine cars emit pollutants during both running and manufacturing. Also the fuel itself, such as gasoline and diesel, has to be refined, 
which also produces pollution. Electric cars will not emit extra pollution when used. And also, at the end of life, battery will be recycled up to 90%. And not because everybody cares for the environment and will do the right thing, but because it makes financial sense to do so. Companies such as Redwood Materials are investing and preparing for these batteries. So is it the perfect solution? No. Why not? Because the grid is still dirty. But that is going to change over time. We have to tackle both problems at the same time. What's the point to make EVs if the grid is dirty? What's the point of cleaning up the grid if the cars pollute more? The world is transitioning in both fronts at the same time. Tesla Regulatory Credits According to many analysts and news media, Tesla is just a car company and any other technology is basically a promise. The problem with this thinking is that Tesla is making progress in all of those areas and all these other technologies are becoming reality, for example self-driving. It was said that it's nothing but a level 2 system. However, the leaps that it's making within this year alone are huge. It's not 100% there yet, but it's definitely bringing in profits already. And more and more people are reporting no disengagement journeys. Well, but it's not 100% officially full self-driving, so we'll say it doesn't count. What about energy storage? Tesla has drastically increased its energy storage capacity in the last few months. And now the mega factory is built and it's capable of 54 gigawatt hours per year. That's enough for 6 million homes to be powered for 5 hours straight. That's already around 4% of all homes in the US or 20% of UK homes. And that's just the beginning. These are tangible results and proof that Tesla indeed is not just a car company. There are many other fields of expansion such as software and Tesla bought insurance, etc. But that's for another video. I think this is definitely an opportunity as automotive analysts are not predicting this as it just does not fall into their industry. Yes, it's possible that full self driving will not be ready for another while, but what happens when it will cross that line when its driving is better than human? And the implications for ride hailing and taxi industry are going to be enormous. So far it does not show any signs of slowing down or that it will not be solved. Every time they plateau with its ability, Tesla engineers seem to come out with new ways and training models, further pioneering this industry. And the AI industry is not automotive where the fundamentals are the same for over 100 years. The AI research papers managed to surpass the previously impossible issues in less than a year. I would suggest investing a bit of time in understanding how AI works and keeping up with the latest research in order to get a better grasp of where Tesla is going and where the rest of automakers will follow. And they will follow, but probably end up licensing full self-driving from Tesla. This will also tie in with Tesla bot in the future, but that's for another video. Guys, thank you so much for watching until the end. If you enjoy, hit like and subscribe. It helps you to promote this content. I want to provide value to as many as I can, so this helps a lot. Any thoughts or feedback would be much appreciated in the comments below. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.